But the dance training is such a reverence, it seems to me, that you become part of this cloth. So, you know, I just think that's so important for those who come after us. Well, I don't know how people. What year was this uh, person with the with the modern dance? This woman, this P P teacher. I graduated in 59, 58, 57, 56. 56. So modern dance. So that was Lamone Hawkins. Who are we talking? About? I don't. I don't know if she so even knew no of those people. Breed. This is my. This is highly of Florida. This okay. is the school near the racetrack. It's okay. like. Maybe she did a couple of workshops or something. I don't know what her inspiration was. But that's fabulous that she, you know, that she. She was a physical it. education teacher, and but somewhere, wow. I can't even remember what she taught us. Maybe, well, she maybe, obviously taught you a lot because look at you now. I mean, you know. Um, she inspired. Mm -hmm. She inspired. She really inspired. Isn't that what teachers are supposed to do? Mm -hmm. To bring out the brilliance, and to inspire. Yeah, and there was a new world growing, and she, she was part of that. Because wow. I can remember even younger, when you're talking about endurance, seeing blood in my toes shoes and thinking that was great. Yeah, because we're taught like, to think that. We're taught to think that. Yeah. So, okay, so you're in this modern dance milieu. And, and still taking tap ballet to acrobatic. <laughs> so when did you have time to read a book or anything, or didn't you? Or what happened to all that Jewish I never, I never got involved in television. And I never cared for movies. That was another thing. Someone tried to kidnap me when I was five. What do you mean? Um, my, I was living with this family, and that just came to me. Um, so she was six years older. Her cousin was seven years older than me. And the three of us went to the movies on Saturday morning. And there was this, um, I'll say cigar store. I don't know what this old what kind of cigarette stores, comic book, magazine places. And I was looking at something. I couldn't read yet, so I was four or five. I think I was five, because I wrote about it in seventh grade. That's how I remember it. And I can remember wandering around, and this old man came over and took hold of me and said, come with me or something. And I said no, because my mother had always told me not to go with strangers. And he started to drag me out of the store, and Billy, who was the cousin of my friend, said, let her go. He came over. He was, must have been 12. And he said, is this your brother? And he said, yes. And he let me go. And what's interesting in those days hmm. is this was not the first instance of this man grabbing kids, but as children, we never told adults. Hi. We lived in a world in which you, it was a totally separate world. You mean between children and adults? We did not discuss things. Wow. Children were seen and not heard. If an adult walked in the room, I stood up. Wow. I said, yes, ma'am, no, sir, to my parents even. And there was a t about that time when I was living with my parents. We lived in one room. We shared a bathroom with the man who lived in the room next door. And my mother had a little hot plate in the bedroom. And the, she washed dishes in the bathroom sink. And we were, we didn't consider ourselves poor because everyone around us was similar. Like today, people talk about poverty. I never felt poor. I had five dresses before school. My mother would make me five dresses and a Sunday dress if I was going to go with someone to church. Church? Mm -hmm. I grew up in the, the South. South. No, that was my grandmother. Oh. But I grew up in Miami. And well, what happened to the Jews? My mother hid that she was Jewish, she and she hid? had, it was during the war, she had an escape route for me. If the, if the Nazis came to America, she had an escape route. I mean, I grew up with this hot, hidden, I had a sister I didn't know. I mean, I had lots of, lots of things. Lots secrets. Of secrets. Lots of secrets. Lots of secrets. And they were not expressed, much as about a secret. They all these, they're incredibly wonderful also, like, there's all this psychological stuff about life and problems and things like that. And I presented, oh, maybe 10 years ago at the um, Body Psychotherapy Conference in Maryland, near Washington. And I did a post-conference thing. And um, I did it with um, another woman 
because I was just, just just beginning to come out of my illness. So it must have been less than 10 years. I can't remember her name. Anyway, among other things, um, I, I, someone had asked me, actually someone in Continuum, I can't remember her name either right now. She had a little boy who had a heart problem at um, birth. Anyway, she asked if I would see him, and then I saw him during the post-conference thing. And I loved this little boy. He was great. He was just great. And it was, I was exploring with him how to stand, and he had a, like a, um, a, a piano thing maybe standing. He was little, this little kid, a year and a half, maybe two, I don't know. Anyway, so I was, we had this incredible communication at a cellular level. Mm -hmm. And he'd look at me and I'd look at him occasionally, but I didn't talk because talking is not generally what I do. <laughs> and so this other woman that I was co-presenting with, she said something about, well, you never acknowledged him because she was a very verbal person and very psychologically oriented, and there was some psychiatrists in the group or whatever, and later one of them said to me, you're more Taoist than psychological. Mm. So there's a way in which I'm interested in psychology for sure, but it, it's too verbal for me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the mystery right. of what I perceive, which is more absorbing. Well, also, I mean, just from the kinesthetic a uh, specialty point of view, the the experience is not cerebral, particularly. It's it's a absorption at the kinesthetic level that uh, that creates this uniqueness. And, and for me, it's at the spiritual soul level. Right. This is a whole other piece of mm -hmm. um, again, to my to my Jewish grandmother. I was just precious. Mm -hmm which is everything. Mm -hmm. To my Quaker grandmother, she was very religious in a Quaker way. Mm -hmm. And the very first thing she taught me was God is love. Mm -hmm. And she put a sign by my bed, whatever good that I may do, let me do it now, for it is true, I shall not pass this way again. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these two grandmothers mm. gave me religion. Right. And then I was very influenced by the Southern Baptists. I was living amongst Southern Baptists. And um, the family I lived with was Catholic in the days when Catholicism was all in Latin mm -hmm. services. And then I might. So it's just a lot of mix, a lot of mix. I mean, just the, again, I want to pause just to kind of absorb, you know, you're like, you're creating a kind of painting of such, un, I mean, it's so interesting, your idea of the house and the car is kind of like this. <laughs> this, this now you Judy, see why it was a fantasy. The Judy Garland party, or, you know, whatever. I mean, but I mean, look, thinking about the circus and all of the, the dynamics and intrigues and Machiavellian, you know, all of that and wanting to kill your mother for racing and and the the um, the the impulse of, of you you know, you being exposed to so many different elements is so interesting. I mean in the sense that most people do not have that that um, that advantage. I mean, here you are. Well, I'm going to interrupt you because this is what I feel psychology doesn't speak about. Yeah, say more. You have this problem, you have that problem, you have this problem, this one's got that, this one's got that, this is labeled this, this is labeled that. It has nothing to do with the person and their karma. And by karma, mm -hmm. I just mean the situation that brings you into this right. moment. Right. And how this moment is going to take you into the next moment. So it's so... Um, and it works. So I'm not saying it doesn't work, but it's not my way. Now, when in this childhood uh, cosmology, uh, did, did you have friendships? I mean, did you mm -hmm. have close friends and mm -hmm. you know, like best friends and do stuff like that? Mm -hmm. that I did. That was there. In fact, that is another story. I told my mother one day. I says, "I want to be." I forget the word now to say. 
I want to have First Communion or whatever that's called. Holy Communion. I'm not sure. Not communion. First communion. No, no, no. I made the right. Where you get your little white dress. Oh, communion. That's okay. Communion. But isn't that Catholic? Yeah. So my mother said, she was, my mother was fierce, by the way, if you haven't gathered. She, she was the fierce one. She said, she was brilliant. She said, do you want to have this thing, the First Communion, whatever, because Brenda is my friend who was getting this white dress, or is it because you believe in it? Mm. She broke it. I didn't have a clue what it was about, but I wanted one of those white dresses with a white veil. <laughs> so that was my... And I had been going to Catholic Church somewhat with this family when I lived with them. Wow. Okay, so back to the modern dance. So I remember Brenda. Yeah. Okay, so back to the modern dance thing. So, 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 you, so there you were in modern dance being inspired by this wonderful teacher. And so then, so take us into like what happened next in your kinesthetic amazement, what? Well, in ninth grade at the same time, I did happen to see a television advertisement about occupational therapy. Hmm. So I said, okay, that's what I'm going to be. So then I planned my four years to become an occupational therapist. Well, what attracted you to that? I think they were working with, were helping people, but it wasn't like medicine. It was like, doing things with people, creative things with people. So occupational therapy, a lot of people think it has to do with occupations, but it's really to occupy one's mind. It's really one of the very first Western mm -hmm. somatic practices mm -hmm. in the yeah. sense of... That is true. So it's interesting. I mean, I'm just, I'm just wondering. I mean, because it's not so cerebral, is it? I mean, you know, in the sense of... I mean, well, in terms on. of physical therapy, the physical therapy had more of the science and mm -hmm. more, it was more recognized being scientific, where occupational therapy, you had to connect it with the meaning. It had to have meaning to the person. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just an exercise. So mm -hmm. I feel very grateful to this field, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so, you, so you saw the ad and then you got... Uh, inspired to and then I started planning my life toward that I had looked into meanwhile I broke my arm when I was 10 so the dance otherwise I would have joined the circus uh -huh. or dance but I lost my my hand was like that for years I wouldn't that, use uh, would that have, uh, inhibit the occupational therapy thing no no uh -uh. I couldn't use it for two years, and then gradually, and I didn't you I have get, polio somewhere. I had polio when I was four. So let's wait a minute. Let's just <laughs> let's just go back to that. Okay, it's a good thing I know you. <laughs> okay, so when you ha when you had polio, 